What's up everyone, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm gonna to be installing a 94 through 2003 Ford Windstar dual electric fans onto my 2012 Ram Power Wagon. So this should be doable on all the fourth gen 09 on up Rams. Uh, no guarantees that it will work on the fifth gen. Oh, and in more particular on the gassers, on the Hemi line. Um, I'm not sure if this would work on the third gen either, a uh, gasser as well. Mostly because if I remember correctly when I had my third gen, I believe the radiator is actually smaller width wise than the fourth gen on up. And the Ford fans are a bit uh, tad too long for this fourth gen radiator, but uh, if you guys stick around, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna make it work. So for those of you that are wondering why on earth I would put Ford fans in my Ram, I actually found out about it by seeing Chevy guys putting it in their Chevy, so there's that. But all, all joking aside, uh, main reason is I just want cooler temps. Uh, cooler temps to me is sub 200 degree Fahrenheit and more consistent cooling. Um, now, this is not applicable to all of you, so I mean, depending where you live. If you're up in Canada, you know, out in the Midwest or whatever, when it's like, you know, good luck even seeing past 190. <laughs> You know, I get it, uh, then this may not be for you. Um, I live out here in Arizona, summer's right around the corner, and I'm gonna be start seeing anywhere between high 90s to like 110 degrees, maybe even more than that. I'm surrounded by hills, I'm planning on towing with this truck. Like, I want cooler temps, and cooler temps to me is under 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I have heard some of the GM guys, you know, LS Swap or whatnot, or you know, big blocks, uh, and their drag and drive cars, like their eight second quarter mile drag cars that, you know, would drive track to track that have installed these fans into like whatever old school chassis they have. Uh, there's, from what I've read, some of them aren't even seeing anything past 170 degrees, which is crazy to me. Um, I have not seen any proof to back that up. I'm sure there might be some other um, supporting mods to that, but I could be wrong. So again, if I see any temps under 200 degrees, I will consider this a success. Again, this isn't for everybody. And for those of you going to tell me in the comments, like, hey, normal operating temp for these engines for Mopar Hemi stuff is around 210 degrees. You're absolutely right. I've done my own research throughout you know, various sources, various forums, various discussion boards, stuff like that. And I came to my own conclusion. If you're curious about it, I suggest you do your own research on it and see if maybe, um, anything cooler than 210 degrees is worth it for you or not. So I'm gonna continue on doing more details into these fans to see if this may be a right choice for you. Okay, here is the factory OEM radiator. Should be very similar in design for the 1500, 2500 gassers for 09 on up. Um, so you guys are obviously looking at the backside. So this side facing the firewall, this is where the OEM small electric fan that the Rams come with that kicks on when you turn your AC on. Or if you did like what I did and installed the V6 uh, van fan, the single fan, it mounts in the same areas too. So you're gonna have one mounting point here for the fan, another one here, and the bottom of it just rests right here on both sides. It's a cat. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys a quick mock-up with the Ford fan on it. All right, I will leave a link in the description below for you more fine details of this fan. But what you're looking at in particular is a 94 through 98 Ford Windstar fan. From 99 to 2003, they went with slightly bigger fan blades and they went to a six blade instead of the eight that you're seeing now. Um, I couldn't really see any like major performance differences between the two, but I'm sure more or less they're the same. So let's talk about CFMs. The smaller one and the bigger one push out roughly anywhere between 21 to 2200 CFMs. So combined, that's over 4000 CFM of air movement. That is a lot. That's more than what the single big uh, V6 fan pushes out. Um, another cool thing about this is the only other style fan that you would find like this that you would buy aftermarket that you would spend maybe three, four hundred dollars on would be like a Durali aftermarket fan. Their designs are very rigid, very good. Uh, those are definitely like track proven. Those things push out 4000 CFM. Uh, however, from what I've heard from many people that have installed them, uh, they do have a lot of amp draw to a point to where you're gonna have to run a bigger alternator. However, with these fans, since they come in a stock you know, vehicle from factory, 
There is a video, I will also leave a link down in the description below, where somebody does the amp draw test of these fans, each individual fan. And on startup, there's a quick spike of 60 amps on both the small and large, and they both steady out within one second at around 18 to 25 amps. So, because from what I've read, a couple people usually run 30 amp fuses with these things, or like 60, or, or uh, 60 amp relays. So, this install myself, temporarily, is going to be a quick cut. I'm going to wire a manual switch to each fan. Um, later on down the road, I am going to be doing a switch panel, and then I'll do I'll install a 60 amp relay, which they should already have. The one I'm looking at already has 60 amp relays uh, installed into it, but I digress. So there's that. So now we'll get into more about how I'm going to install this thing. Okay, so here's a rough idea that I have right now. Um, and again, subject to change. So there's a mounting factory mounting point here, one here, and it's, it's kind of kicked out right now, which is obviously not going to be permanent because I'm just having this thing held up by that tiny little thing right there. Um, yeah, generally this is kind of the plan I have right now. I kept going through my mind because as you guys can see, it is slightly too long width wise, but height wise, um, there's a huge chunk of fins that is not going to be getting airflow. So I debated whether or not I should just keep it on a high up, mostly because that's where all the hot coolant is going to be passing through. Hot coolant is going to be going through the upper radiator hose, through the, through the radiator, and then coming on down. So I figure all the hot points should be getting most of the airflow. And as, you know, coolant moves down back into the engine, uh, it should be cool enough to where I don't know if it would get you know, even hotter enough sitting in these fins, but I could be wrong. Honestly, this is just going to be like a trial and error test. Um, another option I thought about if I was to do this and to accommodate for the fins that are not being covered is to possibly, I'm probably going to find like some sheet metal or some piece of metal I have laying around and maybe even make a shroud, like rivet on a shroud or something here and then have it wrap around down here and accommodate for all that and just have it kind of like sucked up through the fans from bottom on up that's an idea same concept but then moving it down towards the middle to where i'm gonna have some uh, exposed fins on top and bottom running somewhat of a shroud on top and bottom but I'm, to me i'm just like ah, that's a little bit too much work i might end up doing that just because as more, more of a mounting idea that might work a little bit better and then as far as having it far, way far down, it just doesn't make sense to me. Just, again, just mostly because most of the hot coolant is going to be coming up top through that upper radiator hose, coming on top and then just falling down below, uh, getting cooler as it goes down. So this is where I'm at at the moment. Okay, here's the second option where I actually have the fan shroud flipped over and more somewhat centered. I know it's being held by Jack at the moment. To where, as I said earlier, there's going to be a minimal amount of fins showing top and bottom. But if you were to make a shroud that wraps around both of it to where air will be sucked in from those areas, in theory, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking that it would do while the vehicle is stopped or whatnot, then it would accommodate for that. The cool thing about this being flipped is, so these bottom thing, or sorry, these bottom mounts are where they would normally slide in the bottom. Uh, they line up perfectly with the Ram radiator upper mounts. So if I were just to drill a hole, whatnot, and make something to where it's just clamped onto there, the bottom one's going to be a little bit more interesting. I don't know how I would make this work, but I'm sure I can come up with something. Uh, maybe utilize this thing, uh, bend a straight bar, or bend a piece of flat bar, make something. I don't know. <laughs> That's just what's going on through my mind at the moment. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing it the original way where it's on top mostly because the amount of modification i'm going to have to do doing it that route won't require as much if i'm going to do it on this route i'm going to have to notch that top part for it to be able to clear the upper radiator hose inlet and i'm going to have to do that as well because even though it's not really interfering with the bottom uh outlet as well once i put that radiator hose on there i don't want this to be rubbing on that hose so that makes any sense so i'm more likely going to be going that route all right, going to show you the current setup I have on right now. I took the top shroud off. So here's the Dodge V6 van fan, single big fan. So I'm going to take this off. Again, super simple. It's going to be mounting bolt on either end. There. 
and then should just be able to lift up on either side from right here, similar to the four fans. So I'm gonna remove this and then see what we got dealing with for a room. Okay, so I have the Windstar fan in here and actually I like it a lot. It, it's actually thinner than the V6 fan, believe it or not. And so I'm not really too worried about this motor. So if I were to flip it, which I'm not going to now looking at it because like at least for this side, it's like the cutout for it right here. It's almost like this thing was meant to be for this. Obviously I'm gonna have to trim a little bit here for the filler neck to clear this. So I'm probably gonna cut, I'm not sure yet, probably somewhere around here to where I can push this in on top so it can be flush onto there, just like similar to like around here. Mounting this is gonna be a little bit tough on passenger side because I got all these hoses, or yeah, these lines, these, what is it, these power steering lines and whatnot coming through here and it's actually hitting it. So, and it's really close to the actual fan blade housing. So I can't really take off too much. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do there. And I can't really take off too much on that side, mostly because I kind of really like how it's already cut on that side and it's not interfering with the upper radiator hose, but I really can't push it more towards that side either because of the upper radiator hose. So. I'm gonna have to figure out this end width wise and see what I can do for mounting, but I'm gonna start off with at least cutting this off to make the top part flush, and then I'll see what I gotta do with in the bottom. And if I gotta notch off a little bit of this size for it to clear this power steering hose, then we'll do so. Hopefully not too much material will start interfering within the fan uh, housing itself, if that makes any sense. So, oh, so another thing, I'm really not too worried about the bottom fence aren't. I don't know if you guys can see it here. Probably not. I'm not really too worried about the bottom of the fins not being cut because I'm going to leave this on. So hopefully this uh, original clutch fan will draw enough air that's not being taken in from these fans itself. All right, I pretty much have it all notched, notched out and it actually wasn't really too bad. So I'll throw these up top. This thing fits fine. I kind of cut a little too much material away, but I'm not too worried about it because it kept the top um, cowl is going to be on top anyway, the top cover. Um, so, the idea I have, so this is going to be way off angled to the original mounting point for the fan. Um, maybe I'm going to get a flat bar, bend it in a way to where I can utilize this mount to that mount. But another idea I have, if you guys can see it, for the bottom mount, it's going to be really hard to film this. <clears throat> Yeah, it's gonna be pretty difficult. I can get a good angle, I'll show you guys. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. Come on, focus. So, if you see, we're, we're at 90, where uh, that bend happens. Sorry. There we go. So, you see how it's underneath that bottom mounting point where usually the original fan just rests on? I'm thinking I'm gonna cut where it's 90 degrees out and where it's just flat and I'm just gonna like angle it down to where it could hook in in the bottom. And then possibly drill up top here and mount this to the actual top cover for this side. For this side, it's gonna be super easy because the original mounting point on the Windstar fan and the Dodge fan are actually very close. So I can definitely, like even distance wise, it's not that bad. So I'm definitely gonna get a piece of flat bar, uh, bend it just enough to where I can have it held up up top here and there's no way it's going to be able to rest in the bottom I mean I could maybe adapt something to this bottom piece to where it's under there but honestly I'm not too worried about it so so I have the passenger side bracket made this is what I use now you guys can use a one piece but I use two pieces because I just found this one just laying around on my random parts bucket so what you want to do is get a total of three inch flat bar bend it into one inch sections as such and then for this top portion it's roughly about three and a half inches and then i just marked wherever you want to mount it and that's how i have the top portion of the passenger side of the fan mounted 
For the driver's side, I have a roughly five inch flat bar cut and I notch this area here or else it's gonna interfere with this little bracket here. On the aftermarket aluminum one that I have too, it has something very similar to this. So it is gonna interfere regardless. So make sure to notch that out. So again, roughly five inches, just straight. I didn't have to bend nothing just because driver's side, or sorry, yeah, driver's side sits in pretty flush. And yeah, this thing's pretty much secured top wise. So my idea to prevent it from doing this in the bottom would be at least for the driver's side, maybe get a flat bar or cut, like get, make a little L shaped thing that sits here and have it come off and then just bolt it on here or rivet on the bottom. I don't, I don't know yet. And then as far as passenger side goes, still not sure how I'm going to do it. I'm going to cut off this little piece right here because as you can see the bottom fins are not touching there's still a good gap right here so i kind of want that flush on the fins and then kind of go from there and see what i can do on passenger side so for the brackets i actually put it on the outside because when i did it on the inside and think about it pushing the shroud out off the radiator so i want this as close to the radiator as possible so we'll do it on the outside driver side Here's passenger side. Have to bend it just a little bit, but this whole thing is super sturdy right now. I was actually able to, if I can get it on camera again, cut it to where it actually can slide into that bottom mount. I still haven't done anything for this bottom one on the driver's side. Like I said before, if you guys just got a piece of flat bar, screw it or rivet onto the plastic shroud and then have it slide on to where it slips in down there. That's a possibility. I'm probably gonna do that later on, but like, I'm not really too worried about it. Like as much, and I really gotta yank on it for it to like vibrate that much. And I'm not really too worried about it. Obviously over a long time, that's not gonna be a good thing. So I only have one fan wired up at the moment on a switch. So I'm gonna fire this truck up and turn it on. Okay, so it's out of its high idle phase. I'm gonna flip the switch on, see how much of a battery drain there is. There you guys have it. Okay, so I did have to modify the passenger side and actually put the bracket on the outside because the way I had it, it was actually bending this whole, um, the fan shroud itself to where it was like flexing just a bit that when the fan was on you might have heard it in the last clip to where it was just like hitting the shroud itself so I had to loosen it back to where the shrouds and actually where it usually is shaped at so the fan isn't interfering with the shroud itself the result of that is a minor gap but I mean it is what it is honestly the last single fan sh shroud didn't even cover the radiator all the way this is actually doing a better job than the last one did plus with the top cowl over it uh, i'm not too worried about it all right guys that pretty much wraps it up um, i'm not gonna be able to do a test right now i feel like this video is a little too long plus the temperature right now isn't really hot enough to where i'd be able to do a good test uh, mostly because it's like mid 60s right now probably lower than that here the next hour or so and even with the single original fan that i had it will definitely give me temps that i'm looking for in weather like this so uh as time goes on if i go on a long road trip between the next week or so i'll let you guys know and i'll leave a pinned comment down below telling you my results of it and plus i don't have the second fan hooked up right now i will definitely give you guys better uh, test results in july mostly because it's going to be the second year of me owning this truck and i'm going to be doing a second year review of owning this power wagon uh plus the higher temps in july and summer and give you guys uh pretty much what it's going to be running at with those fans now installed so if you guys have any questions please ask down in the comments below i know there's probably going to be many ways you guys would have chosen to uh install this fan i get it but uh leave it down in the comments below let others check it out um i'll do my best to answer your comments and questions when i can so thank you guys for watching i'll catch you in the next one